Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith of the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord.
A lesson from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed 
and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking, speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days, told no one any of the things that they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. What I say and what you hear, be in the name of God. Amen. Today we arrive at the last Sunday of Epiphany, that season where we hear the teachings of Jesus and experience the light that shines out of the darkness that we begin to celebrate on that Feast of the Epiphany. And today, by tradition, we hear the lesson, the Gospel, of Jesus on the mountaintop with Peter and James and John as he was transfigured before them. You got to imagine that it must have been an unbelievable experience to have spent this time with Jesus but then all of a sudden at this one point everything seems to come together there's Jesus with Moses with Elijah the law and the prophets the history of the whole Jewish tradition is there on that mountain proclaiming that all had come to pass in the person of Jesus. But even after that wonderful experience, the only thing that Peter wanted to do was to stay on the mountain. How easy it is to stay on the mountain. To stay on the mountain where everything is crystal clear, where everything makes sense, where if there is ever a question, there is Jesus, there is Moses, and there is Elijah to answer your question. You don't have to do much hard work when you stay on the mountaintop. They entered the cloud. Moses and Elijah disappear, and finally, after being rebuked, Peter realizes that he's got to go down from the mountain. In 1968, Martin Luther King began his final address by saying the words, I have been to the mountaintop. 
But the interesting thing is, he never expected to stay there. Martin Luther King knew, Jesus knew, the disciples finally figured out that being in the presence of God draws us into the valley, not keep us on the mountain. Jesus calls us to live in his presence to always be mindful of his word for us, to live in God's glory, but to always, always know that the real calling isn't up there, but it's down here. Week after week, we come together, we support one another, we sing glorious hymns, we hear wonderful music, we are fed by the body and blood of Christ, we are strengthened on the mountaintop to lead, to go forth into the world proclaiming God's message in real and powerful ways. There are times, and I have to say, there are times that I feel like I stand up here week after week totally wasting my time because the message never changes. The message, no matter what words are used or how it is preached, is the same. That God loves us beyond measure and he shows us that in the person of Jesus. And filled with that, knowing that, we are compelled and driven into the world to make a difference. Just imagine how different this community would be if every single one of us today left this building and changed someone else's life. It wouldn't take long. It wouldn't take very long for hope to be alive for people to see and know that the reality of what we hear preached week after week is real. That God's love and God's care lives through us and it is there for everyone. Peter, James, and John, and eventually the rest realized that the mountaintop was just a moment in time but the reality of their lives as they live them out day after day is what God called them to. Let us be filled. Let us be inspired. Let the power of God be in us mightily. And then go forth into the world filled with the Spirit and making God's creation new. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will
will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We give thanks for the ministries of this parish, especially for our parish life and hospitality committees. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Scott, our own bishop, for our clergy, George, John, and Bill, for our seminarian, Rainey, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray also for the Diocese of Georgia Bishop Search Committee as they begin their search for our new bishop. We pray for Donald, our president, Brian and Henry, our governors, the leadership of the CSRA, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for all those who are serving our country at home and abroad, especially Joe, Dylan, Joe, Trey, and Graham. We pray for the welfare of our congregations in Brunswick, Good Shepherd, St. Athanasius, and St. Mark's, and in our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic. We pray for the Church of the Holy Name in Catalina. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially Anthony, Wendell, Sid, David, Benita, Pete, Sid, Bob, Keisha, Randy, Mona, Paige, Norm, Lonnie, Wayne, Mary, Frank, Jan Blaze, Emmy, Leo, Myra, Walt, John, Jazzy, Hudson. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Oh man. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Everybody settled down real quick right there. That was good. Good to have everybody here today. We are glad you're here at St. Paul's and you're joining us for our worship today. Uh, if you're visiting us, we look forward to greeting you a little bit more out front on the front steps as we uh, enjoy this beautiful day and some time together. Um, as I mentioned, we are at the last Sunday of the Epiphany, uh, which means that Lent can't be far behind a number of things happening as we move through the course of this week. First, we have our pancake supper this coming Tuesday night from five, 6 to 7.30 up in the River Room. Um, please, there's information on how to sign up, how to help, all this stuff if you follow the directions in your bulletin. That is true of many things. We're uh, working on a new way to sign up to help, to RSVP, to say what you will bring, things like that. So please follow the directions in here and, and respond as needed. Then on Ash Wednesday, we will have services here in the church at noon and 7 p.m. We do hope to have a good crowd for that. I do know that um, Father Jenkins is going to be at University Hospital. Um, Father Dolan's going to be at AU. So we're, St. Paul's is going to be spread throughout the community. Um, on this Ash Wednesday, but we do hope to have a good crowd here. Saturday, our Three Bridges Run, a major fundraiser for outreach. We do need the support of everybody in the parish in some way or another. I know many of us are not runners, but there are opportunities available for all. So again, look in your bulletin, see how best to respond and be a part of that. A week from today, is our choral evensong, our Lenten evensong. Please use that as an opportunity to invite friends, neighbors, people that don't usually come to church. It is a wonderful opportunity to gather here at St. Paul's to be inspired and to enjoy so much of what this parish has to offer. Finally, next Sunday afternoon at 2.30 at Church of the Good Shepherd, uh, there is going to be a listening opportunity for our search for a new bishop. Um, I know that people always have an opinion on what sort of bishop they would like. This is your opportunity. Mind you, this is not for clergy. This is for lay people. Clergy get to go somewhere else in the diocese and say our piece. Uh, but you have an opportunity. This coming Sunday, 2.30 at Church of the Good Shepherd. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him, and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow, and you who have faith. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us this day and forever. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.